Hey guys, can you believe it? We are in day 14. I cannot believe y'all that we are on day 14 of our 30 day praying for our unsaved loved ones challenge. So if this is your first time ever watching one of my videos, I want to introduce myself to you. I'm Casey. I live in St. Louis. My husband and I, we are ministers. Um, I like to work out. I like to sew. And I just like to help people. And so God put on my heart like 14 days ago, um, just a desire to pray for unsaved loved ones. That there are specific people in my family, people that I talk to a lot, people that I don't talk to a lot. And um, they are not walking with Christ. And so God put on my heart to just kind of stir up the spirit of evangelism and to stir up faith. Um, and to pray and to seek him and to keep striking the ground um, through prayer, through diligence, that they would be saved. And I just know that God's mouth is huge. He's not just always talking to me. He's talking to so many of us. And so I invited y'all to join me on this prayer challenge. So some of you guys have been with me the past 14 days and some of you guys are just jumping in today. So welcome. And so you know how we do it. We pray. And so today I want to talk about overcoming a spirit of fear and rejection. If I'm honest with myself, there have been many times where I have been afraid to be bold, even with family members that I know love me. I've been afraid to just be honest and say, hey, um, if you were to pass tonight, do you know that you would go to heaven? Like I have been afraid because I don't know, like, I don't want people to think that I'm a Jesus freak or like weird or, you know, just crazy. Um, but when I really think about that, I really have to um, just be honest with myself and be like, what's wrong with being a Jesus freak? <laughs> like, you can be a Jesus freak, but you don't have to be weird. But what's wrong with... Um, asking people, you know, if they've ever accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so I guess what I want to do is just kind of normalize us having conversations with our unsaved loved ones, having conversations with our coworkers, praying to God that he will open up doors for us to have these conversations. I was reading a devotional and um, the writer was sharing how he is praying that God will bring people to him who have questions about faith, about Jesus Christ. Like that is what he is praying for. He is asking God to send people to him that have questions. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, what What a prayer. Um, but the Bible, I believe it's like in 2 Peter or 1 Peter, but it talks about that when people do have questions, we should have a ready answer to explain in humility why we believe what we believe. And so... I just thought that that was a challenge, just reading that. That was a challenge to me to begin to pray. And as we prepare for like holidays, family gatherings, you know, what happens if I have a family member that says like, hey, can you talk to me about this God stuff? I remember, and we're going to pray in a moment. Y'all know how I do. We like to talk and, and then we pray and then we talk a little bit more. But I remember one time, so... A couple of years ago, my husband and I, we came up with this idea of getting these t-shirts and these t-shirts have a saying, pray for St. Louis. And on the back of the t-shirts, it's the scripture, second Chronicles seven and 14. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal the land. That's, that's my paraphrase of that scripture. But this individual, he came to me. So um, I'm at the gym and we are cooling down. So the, the workout session has ended. And this gentleman, he came to me and he was like, um, so I read your scripture. Uh, he was like, I read your t-shirt. And he was like, what does that mean? And so I was like, Oh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Um, but, you know, I was just able to share about, you know, just the power of prayer and that, you know, I created these T-shirts um, to just get people to begin praying um, for change in our city and in our region. And then I shared something about, you know, how, you know, prayer has impacted my life and it's led me to a closer relationship with God. And, um, you know, he seemed to receive it. He was obviously 
in a place of just seeking God. Um, and he just, you know, nodded his head and, um, he said something, this was a couple of years ago, but he said something to make me think that he was curious about God. Um, I didn't feel like compelled to say like, Hey, would you like to have a cup of coffee? You know, we could talk further. I didn't feel compelled to, you know, go that length. Um, sometimes like with men, you know, men or like, you know, individuals with the opposite sex. I just don't do that. Um, but I am praying that God will send other laborers across his path, that he will have questions and laborers will be prepared, you know, to just share the word of God, you know, with him. But um, yeah, that was just, um, that was just a, just a reminder that, you know, people may have questions and they may come to us and may we be ready and not be afraid of being rejected, but just being honest and just telling the truth. So Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for just the opportunity, God, that we will be ready in season and out. I thank you, God, that our words will be seasoned with grace um, but and like seasoned with salt, God. And I thank you, Father, that, God, you're going to send people to us, our unsaved loved ones, God, unsaved co-workers, God. I thank you, Lord, for opening up doors and just having invitations, God, like just the invitation for people to come to us. And, God, I thank you that, God, you're going to give us wisdom on what to say and how to say it, and that, God, we will be able to lead people to you. I thank you, Father, that God, you are tenderizing hearts of the unsaved. I thank you, Father. People are seeking. They want to know about you. They want to know more about you. And I thank you, Father, that as believers, we will be humble. We will be gracious. We will be kind. We will be compassionate. We will be patient. We'll take time out of our schedules, Father, to just talk with people and just to share the joy of Christ with them. God, I thank you for a spirit of discipleship. I thank you, Lord, for just like the heart to disciple and to help mentor and to help train and help strengthen um, baby or new Christians that are coming into the faith. And so I'm going to put a pin here. Um, I've shared... I think it was like during the first week of this challenge, how um, God had placed on my heart um, a desire to talk to one of my family members about sharing about God. And the family member was like, um, I will meet with you. But um, if you're going to talk about Jesus, I don't want to go, you know, and I, I shared how that was like a missed opportunity because um, even though like I obviously wanted to talk to them about salvation um, because I just felt that. That was, that was something that was obviously very missing in their life. They weren't ready. They were willing to meet with me, but they didn't want to talk about God. Um, but so I shared how that was a missed opportunity that I should have just went, you know, and met this family member and we could have just talked. And so, cause really what it would do would have done was like help develop a relationship. Um, but even getting to that point of inviting that family member to coffee, um, I, I really had like a spirit of fear because I was afraid of rejection. It ended up happening anyway. But um, I remember talking to my husband about it. And my husband was like, you know what, Casey, you can't, you got to let your love um, compel you. You have to let love push you past the spirit of fear and rejection. My husband, he gave the illustration. He was like, you know, if you see somebody about to, you know, walk off a cliff love will have you say hey stop you know there's a cliff right there if you keep going you're going to fall over and so my husband was just like you know when he gave me that illustration it helped me to have um, courage to reach out to this loved one because I saw that they were you know falling over the cliff and so I just shared that with you, that sometimes we see our loved ones and they are about to fall over the cliff. And because of fear, the enemy will try to mute our voice where we won't say anything to them. We just watch them fail. We just watch them, you know, flounder around. But love, the love that we have for others, it should, it should rise up in us um, that we will speak and we will say something. I remember... Um, there was, uh, I call her a friend. 
I call her a friend. Um, there was a time where we were a bit closer um, than we are now. Um, but this was a friend that um, grew up in the church from what I understand, um, had like a position of leadership. And then um, maybe like a year ago, I saw on Facebook and like we hadn't talked regularly. Nothing had happened. We just, you know, life. Um, but I saw like on Facebook um, that she was like promoting like a new age practice. A new age is um, like crystals, tarot card readings, burning sage, you know, like those are kind of like some of like the new age kind of stuff. And so um, at first I was like, I was like, that's really interesting that she's doing that because that's, you know, we don't, we don't do that as believers. You know, I know the world does that. And so um, I kind of like thought about it for a while and I was like, should I say something? Should I not? And so I decided I was going to say something. And so I sent her a message and I was like, hey, sister, <laughs> I am just sending this to you in love. And I say, you know, I saw your post about, you know, you doing X, Y, and Z. And um, I just want to share with you that I don't really believe that, you know, this is something that believers do. Um, and I was like, I came across this video teaching about why Christians should not engage in this activity. And um, I just want to share it with you and just know that I send it to you like with the love of Jesus Christ. So I send it to her and um, she responded and she was like, I love you too. Um, but, you know, she didn't say like she was going to stop, you know, practicing it or whatever. But, um, you know, my thing is this, is that I would rather have it be said that um, Casey, she did um, confront or she did um, share the truth with me in love instead of not saying anything. Uh, my husband was um, telling me about this scripture. I know it's in Proverbs where it is like... Um, man it's i'm paraphrasing it but it says something about like the the wounds of an enemy are better than the silence of a friend or the i don't know it's something like that but basically it's like look um a friend is going to tell you the truth where um an enemy will just flatter or not say something man i'm gonna have to go back and look at that scripture so anyway y'all um, this is just about just encouraging us to be bold, not to be afraid of rejection and to really share the truth with our unsaved loved ones. So, Father, I thank you, God, again, for courage. I thank you, Lord, for a heart of love. Father, I'm asking God that. God, you will do a work in me, that God, you will do a work in us, that God, when we see unsaved loved ones, Father, that we see them through your eyes, that we have compassion, and God, that we will have a heart of love to share and to tell the truth, that Father, we will be concerned, um, and God, literally, um, God, let us just have a heart for the unsaved. That's really what it boils down to, that God, um, unsaved, whether they're in our family or not, but God, let us have a heart of grace and a heart, Lord, to speak the truth and to speak it in love. And God, I thank you that, God, you're tenderizing the hearts of the unsaved. I thank you, God, that you're removing scales off their eyes. Father, I thank you, Lord, people today. They're inquiring, how can I know Jesus? Who is this Jesus? Who is this God? I thank you, Father, for the work that you are doing in the hearts and minds of those that are unsaved, God. And I thank you, Lord, today, somebody is going to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so if that's you, maybe you're watching this video and you just stumbled across it. I want to let you know you didn't just stumble, that God divinely orchestrated for you to watch this video. Um, and if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can do it. There's a scripture in Romans chapter 9 where it says that if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, if you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you'll be saved. And so all you have to do is just invite Jesus into your heart and say, Jesus, I want to get to know you. I want you to live in my heart. I want you to be my savior. I want to have a relationship with you. Will you show me who you really are? Lead me and guide me. It really is that simple. Then when you invite Jesus to come into your heart, you become saved. Then when you believe that he died on the cross for your sins, you become saved. Um, and you, um, you become part of the family of God. It really is that simple. It's just believing and confessing. And so after you've done that, 
I just encourage you to get linked up with a good Bible-based church so you can grow and develop in the things of God. So um, welcome to the family <laughs> if you've asked Jesus into your heart for the first time. And for those of you that are current believers, I pray that something that I said has encouraged you to just be bold, to not be afraid, to open up your mouth and to allow love to drive you, to allow love to compel you, to allow love to cause you to speak up, that we won't be afraid of rejection. We won't be afraid if they say no, God, um, but we will just continue to just love and continue to pray for them and believe that God is going to work in their lives. So you guys, I bless you all in the name of Jesus. I'm so glad we're at day 14. I'll be back tomorrow for day 15. Be blessed. Bye.